Don't drink this. Hi, it's Isrin here with another League Starter for 3.17, and this is Poison Concoction, a build that I did with uh, New Yi last league, and we are changing it a little bit. Sai has come up with some new min-max technology, and I'm very, very excited to... We can give some bullet points for this build, like leveling should be really nice, and this build is going to be nearly immortal versus physical hits, like from normal monsters, because we are rocking a 80,000 armor at the end game, so it's insane, and... Which I really want to show in the intro, the really special thing here is the flask technology. And if you see, look how often in the background those flasks are proccing. Now, the technology that we're using here is Master Surgeon, which is recover 6% of life whenever you use any flask. So this includes like your utility flask. And with Instilling Orb, we can have use this flask automatically whenever you have full charges. And it won't be on every hit, but you will basically gain 24% of your life every few hits that you're getting hit. And you have so much charge generation that's absolutely insane. And this gives you very close to being immortal against like small rapid hits. Things that, you know, for example, Block is also good at solving these things. So it's a really, really good thing uh, against those. And then ends up being our only weakness would then be one shots and like really big, large chunks of damage. But even against that, we are pretty tanky too. So it's a very cool way to play. And the clips in the background, that's not just anything. That's from the gauntlet. Now, this isn't necessarily the best boss killer because, you know, it's it's damaged while you're standing still, right? It's not something like Cold Dot where you can just run around and play something on the boss or run around near the boss. You actually have to be actively doing damage. But it's a really, really nice clear and it's incredibly tanky and very fun to play. Now, as normal, we have a step-by-step -step guide showing exactly where to put skill points when. So very easy to follow. Ascendancy points and everything is in the guide as well. And for the bandits, we kill them all. We want those two skill points. And the Pantheon is Brian King and Garakhan. And if you upgrade uh, Brian King, you can get freeze immunity from it as well. And uh, we have endgame trees with cluster and without cluster. Clusters are very, very strong for this build. So that is definitely a downside. Keep that in mind that, you know, it, it should come up online very quickly. But it's not going to be the fastest at killing like new bosses and stuff like that because it does require some investment there. For the skills, it's very easy to follow. We have uh, a leveling tree here. We start out with Caustic Arrow. Very easy. You just get a bow and uh, you just right click things while leveling. At level 12, we can already change to Poison Concoction. And a very important stat on flasks while you're leveling is you want the increased amount recovered. This will increase our damage. Now, it's not an insane amount, so don't feel bad if you don't have it, but you want to keep upgrading your life flasks as you're leveling because that is how we get our damage. And uh, yeah, the leveling process should be very easy to follow, and then we have the end game stuff here. Now, something that's really nice about this build is that it's a poison build, so we get to use Plague Bearer. Plague Bearer is like a righteous fire that we sort of have to fill up. So think of it as, as, as a meter that fills up, and when it's maxed, you can like unleash it and you're basically spamming this anytime it's full you can use it for single target damage too but it doesn't really do a ton there uh, but it is um so much damage and then you would activate your plague bearer and then you would use withering step and just run through things and everything is going to be dying so you're actually not using poison concoction all the time while mapping a lot of the clearing is from plague bearer so it's such a fast build in the notes as well, we're going to have even more information and most things and easy things to like easy problems to run into will be answered in the notes as normal. And we have an early, a mid game and an end game tree. An important thing to mention here is that you need to have no weapon equipped at all. However, you still can sort of cheat this. So a really good trip for being able to still use a weapon and level gems in it would be to make sure you have enough strength. I actually can't find an amber amulet or anything, so I'm just going to respec into strength to show you. But now it works. And then once it is enabled, you put it in, equip it, and you um, uh, put in the gems that you want to level, and then you would unequip the amulet. And now it is going to be disabled, and uh, it'll count as if you are unarmed, but you're still able to wear gems. Now, the most important thing you need for flasks is the flagellant roll. Obviously, like the lower ones are good too. Even as long as you get four or five et cetera charges, that is going to be a noticeable difference. But once you get flagellant, your potions will be going nuts because you're getting seven charges each time you're hit by an enemy. 
So this is item level 80 and fast are very, very important on this build. It's one of the main things that you want to spend currency rolling. You can see in the endgame gear, there's no like crazy uniques or anything. And uh, it should be a very, very easy build to do. Now, one thing worth mentioning for this build, if you look at the helmet, focus is incredibly strong. It basically gives you a new ability once you have this crafted on any gear. And uh, for this is a duration of ailments you inflict while focused. And you can look at our damage, how big this is because it makes the poisons last for such a long time. And we also have a second focus on this build when we have room for it, which is attacking cast speed while focused. And you might be thinking, Ziz, I don't want multiple hotkeys for something like this. Well, they all go on the same key. All your focuses are used at the same time. So for how to play this build, it's pretty straightforward. So whenever you're attacking monsters, you'll see in the top left, our Plague Berry is building up here. And um, once that hits, Max the icon will change slightly, like so. Now, once that is, then you're just running around and you can see I'm not clicking anything. Everything's just dying like righteous fire around me. And uh, it's really, really good. You can shield charge as well with that up for even more speed. And it's a very, very fast build. Now, for bosses, we'll go show that. Now we're coming up on the boss here and something that's kind of nice is that shield charge does not put withering step on cooldown. So we can shield charge. The only thing we can't do is um, use our flame dash. Now what I'm doing now is I'm just running around the boss and I'm using withering step when I can when it's off cooldown for even more damage. It'll put wither stacks on the boss which will increase the damage we do by a lot. So let's do the regular Q&A that we do at the end of every build guide. Are there too many gems to equip? The build struggles a little bit with socket pressure. We're obviously missing a three link from the weapon. The easiest thing to drop would be Ancestral Protector. And obviously we could only go with, for example, Flame Dash as a movement setup if you don't want to go Shield Charge. But Shield Charge is very important to your clear speed. Can the player have mana issues? So while leveling, we use the Claw Mastery for life and mana gained on hit. But uh, later on, we switch to Life Tap. So we're not really even using mana. So it's pretty easy mana wise. What about useful level uniques? There's nothing really that stands out. It would be your standard level uniques like Gold Rim, Wanderlust, and Tabula. For quality of life, defense options, like it's just, it's such an interesting way uh, to play because of Master Surgeon. It's incredibly strong and obviously you get so much power from your flask on this build and it is pretty much always up. Obviously it's not going to be up in longer boss fights all the time. Some bosses are not really prone to hitting you with like small attacks. And, and this build just has insane sustain and flash should still be up a large amount of the time. We have also like really, really nice fast recovery with a life fast getting a bunch of charges per second. One thing important to mention for this is make sure you turn off auto equip so you're not like just suddenly running around with a main hand that's not really doing anything for you. It's also easy to forget that this is an attack skill. So, you know, things like ancestral protector, etc. attack speed does help you. Now, an important thing to know here, we do want to have a 100% poison chance. So you can use, for example, Herald of Agony early on. We have some Claw Nodes with poison chance as well. And uh, we also have a Claw Mastery early on. That is really, really nice for giving us mana and uh, life when we uh, hit with our attacks. So if you're wondering why we have those, those are the reason. But make sure you have a 100% chance to poison. As far as downsides for the build, obviously it's not the best bolster because it has active damage and it doesn't have an insane amount of damage either. You can get a little bit over 1.5 million with some in-game gear, so it's not something that's going to burst bosses down and you will have to know the mechanic. Now, obviously fairly tanky and uh, you have a lot of like flask recovery, which is really nice and you can go with multiple life flasks for bosses as well if you'd like to. But uh, insanely good league starter, very fun to play. Let me know if you're starting with this for 3.17. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.